Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech emulation and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, there was no video yesterday as I was not feeling that great, but we're back at it again today and I've got a lot of news to go over. The first thing here is PlayStation 3 emulation with RPCS3. And RPCS3 just got a whole lot snappier. So here's the announcement from RPCS3. They say game initial loading times have been greatly improved, as the applying PPU code stage has been replaced by an almost instantaneous function. Starting on RPCS3 version 0.0.31-16208. And fun fact, RPCS3 is already on version 16271. The developers of this emulator are working very quickly. So someone by the name of Augusto7743 tested out these changes and said in previous builds, loading some games with large numbers of PPUs took more than one or two minutes. Now it's instantaneous. And there's a side benefit, now as if RPCS3 is using less system memory too. So let me know your thoughts about this new version of RPCS3 in the comments below. And if you've tested out games like Skate 3, let me know your thoughts on the loading times in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about custom GPU drivers on Android, specifically for Snapdragon CPUs with Adreno GPUs and it appears that turnip drivers are getting ray tracing support. Now it's worth pointing out that this is specifically for Adreno 740 GPUs and also Adreno 750 GPUs. The Adreno 740 is specific for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and the Adreno 750 is specific for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and the upcoming Snapdragon X Elite. While ray tracing may be pretty cool, on smartphones I'd argue it would be the exact opposite. It would be pretty hot. I'm assuming this would run chips fairly warm and reduce performance, but I could be wrong. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about the arguably controversial DK Oldies. And for those who may not be aware, this is an online retro gaming store. They've received a lot of bad press over the years for their pricing structure, their arguably misleading ads, and also not refurbishing consoles when they said they were refurbished. There's a lot of videos out there, I'll drop a link to a couple in the description below in the event that you wanted to check one out. And it appears they're in yet another controversy. This website I think was hacked just the other day. Quest64 official spotted this and says, so DK Oldies was cyber attacked in the last 24 hours. As you shop their website, you're redirected to this fairly docile text wall, dragging them for their pricing policies. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to this tweet in the description below and feel free to check it out. At the bottom it says, look at this, sale price $43.99, average cost $7.12. They are selling this for $43, but they're buying it for $7.12. But heading over now to the DK Oldies website, and it appears that everything has been restored. And this does appear to be a very expensive price for an SNES with Super Mario World. Let me know your thoughts about DK Oldies in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about 8-Bit Do, and 8-Bit Do, or 8-Bit Do, has just unveiled a brand new keyboard. This is hot off the heels of their N64-inspired keyboard, and this one's inspired by the Commodore 64, the C64 edition. So the first keyboards they released were NES-inspired. We've got this one here for 93 bucks. We've got the Famicom edition for 89.68. And this new C64 edition for $109.99. The big difference with this one is that it comes with a little joystick. I don't know about you, but I like where 8 Do is going with this. I'm hoping that maybe one day they'll release an SNES inspired one. Next up, this is a quick one. We're talking about Sipede or Sipede. I'm not quite sure on how to say this. They're in the process of making a brand new FPGA handheld console. And it may take on the likes of something like the Analog Pocket. They're planning on having this play NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and even more systems. Taking a quick peek at one of the images, and immediately I see there may be issue with the D-pad. It does not look like it's going to be good at all. I could be wrong though. And this device in general seems pretty small. They say the screen on this one is only going to be 2 inches, and they plan on making another model with a screen that's 3.5 to 4.5 inches. Next up, we're talking about Dragon's Dogma 2, and this game has arguably been off to a pretty rough start, and just received its first patch. So with this update, Capcom has added the option to start a new game when save data already exists, something that arguably should have been there from the start. They changed the number of Art of Metamorphosis items available upon guilds in the game to 99. They've improved quality when DLSS Super Resolution is enabled. 
There's miscellaneous text display issues that have been fixed and also miscellaneous bug fixes. However, what I didn't see in these patch notes, aside from the DLSS stuff, are performance improvements. Now, I could be wrong because I don't own a copy of Dragon's Dogma 2, but I did some searching online and didn't see performance improvements across the board. If you have seen performance improvements, if you own the game, let me know in the comments below. Next up, we're quickly talking about Earthblade, which is a brand new game being made by the creators of Celeste. This game was originally supposed to come out in 2024, but has been delayed until 2025. Now to be fully transparent, they did not specifically say 2025, but I'm assuming 2025 and I could be wrong. But in their March 2024 Earthblade update, they say the game ain't coming out in 2024. To be honest with you, I am absolutely A-OK -okay with this. I'd rather them delay the game and make something great as opposed to rush it and push out garbage. I mean, we've seen a lot of rushed games and look at the feedback that gets. Next up, we're talking about gaming on Linux, not specifically the Steam Deck, and Valve has just pushed out a brand new version of Proton Experimental. On top of now playable games like Tekken 8, we've got Tavern of Elves, Snares of Ruin 2, and Irrigon. On top of that, there's fixes and improvements for the finals, Horizon Forbidden West, Command & Conquer Red Alert 2, Joe Danger, and Joe Danger 2 on AMD GPUs. And they say here, a limited number of cores seen by the following games, making them playable on high core count CPUs. Far Cry 2 and 4, The Witcher 2, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, and a whole bunch of Warhammer games. They've also fixed a few regressions. For example, Borderlands Game of the Year Enhanced is playable again. And Sea of Thieves is able to play videos again on the Steam Deck. Next up, we're talking about a pretty impressive ROM hack for the Sega Mega Driver, Genesis. It's called Sonic 3D DX Plus, and it just released. They say the aim of this hack is to apply some of the stylistic changes of the Sega Saturn version of the game to the Mega Drive Director's Cut. Interestingly, there are two different versions of this patch, one with the untouched original Mega Drive soundtrack, and the other with most of the music tracks in the game muted, so you can listen to the Saturn soundtrack. If you are curious about this one, I'll drop a link to it in the description below, and feel free to check this one out. To me, this is very impressive and looks very good. Next up is just a friendly heads up about a couple of free games. The first one here is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This game released in 2023, and it's currently free to play on Steam for a couple of days. And the second game is Eyelids. Now this is a fun indie game released back in 2022 and it's currently free on the Epic Game Store. And for reference, Eyelets has an overwhelmingly positive review score overall on Steam. So even if you don't like the Epic Game Store, it might be worth checking out on Steam. Moving on, and I've got another quick one for you. We're talking about MAME for Droid 2024, where MAME stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator, depending on how you want to interpret that. Anyways, this app was just updated to version 0.264 to match the regular version of MAME. Next up, this is an interesting one. I thought this project got a DMCA from Nintendo, but maybe I've been mistaken. Because it seems development on Lockpick RCM has continued. I'm not gonna lie, I am very confused about this one and surprised to see a new update. But anyways, they've updated this to support firmware 18.0.0. I'll drop a link in the description below in the event that you wanted to learn more about it. And last up here, we're talking about a Metroidvania that has just launched on mobile, both on Android and iOS. It's called After Image, and it costs $4. This game features hand-drawn graphics and honestly looks pretty good. I haven't played this one yet, but based on the trailer, I may pick this one up. If you've played After Image, let me know if I should pick it up in the comments below. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.